supposed to when you speak up your very soft voice, and so it's, it's a little hard for, for some of us to hear sometimes. Okay. Right. Uh, Eric, uh, do you know Stephanie Lowe? Yes. And how did you get to know Stephanie? Um, we were friends at first, and we started dating. When did uh, you start to date Stephanie? Sometime in April 2010. And uh, did there come a time when you were living with Stephanie? Yes. Approximately when did you start living with her? Mm -hmm. I believe in May of 2010. Okay. And were you living together at that time of street address? No. Not initially, but yeah. at some point in time, did you start living there? Yes. Well, when did you move into that? <coughs> approximately. Approximately like <coughs> late June, July. And how many people were living in that residence? Just me and Stephanie. Now, were you actually staying there uh, for the couple days before Stephanie was killed? Yes. Were you somewhere else, though, for a while? No. Were you in jail? Yeah. Okay. When did you go to jail? October 8th. Okay. And that was on a probation hold, if I understand correctly? Yes. Okay. And were you still in jail as of October 10th? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your recollection of Stephanie? What type of person? She was caring. She's um like she did anything somebody asked her to do. Like, you know, she's respectful about me. Eric, showing you what has been previously marked as exhibit number 240, can you tell me what this item is? Toothbrush. And do you know whose toothbrush that is? Stephanie's. And was she the only one who used this toothbrush? Yes. At this point in time, I would move if we haven't, I'd move the admission of 240. No objection. It was received yesterday. It was, okay. I didn't want to show that was. version of that. Uh, this photo was previously identified uh, by Captain Barnes as being the spare bedroom in your apartment at West Thomas Street. Does that look accurate to you? It should have been blankets right there. Okay. It appears there's some blinds that are up. Does that look right? Sometimes, but... Okay. They were usually down? Yes. Okay. Uh, but does the room at least appear to be your, that spare bedroom? Yes. Can we switch to the computer? Looking at the screen as soon as it comes up, does that appear to be that same picture except in color? Yes. Okay. What I want to do is I want to zoom in on the windows and I want to ask you a question about that if, you, if I could. You were familiar with the windows and how they windows lock. Yes. Would that be accurate? Can you tell us whether or not those windows, the position where the locking mechanism on those windows are, is that the locked or the unlocked position for those windows? Can't read the text. 
potato. If I zoom in a little closer, that help? Does that appear to be locked or unlocked? You seem locked. Okay, let's move to the other one. We'll just slide over. Do those appear to be locked or unlocked? It looks like locked. Okay, thank you. You can switch back down. Thank you. Now, Eric, I want to talk to you a little bit about. things you were doing in 2010. Were you involved in 2010 in selling of illegal drugs? Yes. What types of illegal drugs were you selling? Correct. Okay. And was that here in Wausau? Yes. Was Stephanie involved with you in some way? Yes. Now, did you, as of October of 2010 and before, know the defendant in this case? Yes. And how did you get to know him? Through drug transactions. Did he buy drugs from you or sell drugs to you? He buy. Did he sometimes, if you know, uh, through your personal knowledge, did he sometimes buy drugs from Stephanie as well? Yes. Did he also help you out by renting some furniture at some point? Yes. Can you tell, what can you tell us about that? Can you phrase that? Like, well, to, how did that come to be? Why did um, you ask him to help you with that? Because I need some furniture and they won't rent to me. Okay. Who was making the payments on the furniture that was rented? Me and Steph. Did the defendant have any nicknames or names that he went by? Spider. Now, did you also have a safe that was kept uh, in your residence? Yes. And that's already been identified. Can you tell us what did this safe look like? It's just like a little black, black box, hot box. And what was kept in that safe? What types of things? Mm -hmm. My, like my personal stuff, or birth certificate, so to speak, or <coughs> keep money in there. Were drugs sometimes kept in it too? Yes. And where was the safe typically kept in the apartment? You usually have it out or like in a closet on the floor. Okay. So would it sometimes be up on a shelf in the closet? Well, not to my recollection. Not that you know. No, yeah. okay. Now, when you weren't around, were you aware of what Stephanie, what, actually, let's, let's go back a second. Can you describe the residence? How many doors were, did you have to go through to actually get into the apartment itself? Two. Right. Uh, there would be, the apartment, if I understand, we've heard testimony about this, was a second floor apartment, right? Yes. So there was, there was a door to ground floor, right? Yes. And then door at the second floor to the right, correct? Yes. The door uh, at the street level, did that have any locking mechanism on it? Yes. What type of lock did it have on it? The dead bolt. Okay. And was there also a lock on <coughs> the handle itself? Yes. All right. And that's one of those that you turn the, the knob on the inside of the block? Yes. Right. The dead bolt did you have to have a key from the outside to open that? Yes. All right. And how about the upstairs door? What type of locking mechanism did the upstairs door have? I can remember it's just a damn bolt. Now, uh, Eric, when Stephanie was alone, in other words, if you weren't home, do you know what she would do as far as how she would secure the apartment? Lock both doors. With the dead bolts or with just the other one? Dead bolts. And if somebody's knocking at the door, the base, the entry level door at the on the first floor, are you able to tell who's there somehow? Yes. How can you tell? 
either look out the kitchen window or open the top door and look out the, the window that's in that leads downstairs. Okay. And if Stephanie, uh, somebody would knock at the door, do you know what she'd do if she didn't know for sure who it was? Either look out one of the windows. Okay. Would she typically open the door for someone she didn't know? If you know? No. She would not? No. <coughs> Start with the door at the bottom, the, the entry door at street level. Do you know if the deadbolt was engaged? Was that door easy to break into without using a significant amount of force? Mm, no, I don't think so because the way it opens. Right. How about the door at the upper level? Was that door? Easier, easy to get into without using a significant amount of force? No. Let's talk about, uh, do you have a cell phone as of October of 2010? Yes. Okay. When you went to jail, did, your, did Stephanie have your cell phone? Yes. What type of cell phone was that? An LG slider. And was there anything wrong with that phone? Yes. What was wrong with it? It was broke. It didn't work unless it was plugged up. I'm sorry? It didn't work unless it was plugged up. Okay, so if it wasn't plugged into a wall, the phone would power up and work? No. Okay. Was there anything else wrong with the phone? Yeah, the screen was broke. Okay. So with the screen being broke, could you see who was calling if somebody called? Like on a, a lot of times on a phone you could see the number or the name of the person? No. When you got out of jail, uh, did you go back to that apartment at some point in time? You never got out. I'm sorry? I never oh, got you out. you never got out? Okay. Do you know if your phone was ever recovered? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. And did Stephanie have a phone at that time as well? Yes. Did you guys at some point in time have a third phone? Mm. A third, a, not just a physical phone, but a third number? Mm. No. Did you ever have a number that you used just for drug transactions? Mm. No. Did you have a nickname or a name that you went under in the area? Yes. What was that? E. Do you know, did you know anybody else in the Wausau area that went by the name? E? E. No. Let's talk about the bed uh, in the uh, residence. Uh, did you have a particular bedroom that was generally yours? Yes. Okay. And actually, I'm going to do that. Might be helpful. All of us put up what was previously identified uh, as a diagram that was prepared of your residence. Does this appear to be accurate as far as the layout of your apartment? bedroom here that's listed as main bedroom, is that the bedroom that you and Stephanie shared? Yes. Right. And then the one that's listed as spare bedroom, is that the one that we talked about with those pictures of the windows? Yes. <coughs> and it appears there's a, a bed in, the in your main bedroom, right? Yes. Was that bed typically made up? In other words, did it typically have sheets and some type of blankets or comforters on it? Yes. Uh, was there any type of specific blanket that Stephanie liked and, and had on there frequently? She had a little um, like quilt. Okay. Type. 
it have a pattern on it? Yes. What was that pattern? I can't remember. Do you remember a blanket that had a horse on it? Yes. Okay. Is that something she had? Yeah, no. What can you tell us about that? Mm. That blanket? Well, she loved it. She, all the, she loved it. She kept the winter all the time. Besides uh, blanket, comforter, sheets, was there anything else that was typical in that day? Mm, not that hard. Did you have pillows? Yeah. How many pillows did you usually have? I don't know. It was a lot. Cut. Okay. Exhibit number 68. Does that appear to be the mattress in your uh, is it in that main bedroom? Yes. And I see on exhibit 68 there are a number of notes on there. Do you know do you see those? Yes. Do you know who wrote those notes? No. Okay. Uh yeah, uh publishes your So this is the photo I just showed you, correct? Yes. Sorry. So there's some notes on here. Uh, it indicates a fitted sheet on top, light blue gray. Is that something you would have that you would have expected to be on that? Yes. Okay. It also says dark green fuzzy <coughs> blanket horses on it. Uh, Mom gave her blanket. Is that something you would? Told the detective told about and that would have been there? Yes. All right. uh, it's obviously not there, correct? Yes. Uh, and then it, down at the bottom, it says uh, four pillows, two on his side, two on her side with pillowcases. Yes. Is that something that would normally be there? Yes. Again, they're not there, correct? Yes. And then also it says uh, two cases may have matched. In other words, two of the pillowcases may have matched and the other two wouldn't have. Yes. Last time you were in the apartment before uh, you were put in jail, can you tell us what or not those items were on this bed? Yes. It's not a good admission of Exhibit 68 at this point. No objection. It is received. Cope showing you a number of pictures and asking you about them and what might be missing or wrong in those pictures? Yes. And you gave him comments about those things, correct? Right. Let's talk about then, wait, let's see, that's exhibit 65, which is here. Identification is Exhibit 65. Is that one of those photos that was shown to you by Lieutenant Cole? Yes. All right. Again, there's notes on there. Uh, I think it says toilet seat up unusual, correct? Yes. And publisher on it? Yes. I've been looking at uh, Exhibit 65. Uh, if Stephanie's at the apartment alone, is that? Oh, you would expect to see that toilet seat? No. All right. 
I suppose that's probably true for just about anything, now, isn't that? Yes. All right. Move the admission of Exhibit 65. No objection. It is received. Exhibit 69. Does that appear to be the bathroom at the residence on West Thomas Street? Yes. Are there any things in there that appear unusual to you in that photo? Um, fucking towels on the floor. Okay. Uh, um, Matt, publish your honor. So we, we see a bucket in there. Where would that bucket normally be? In, you know? in the kitchen. Okay. And how about the towels on the floor you commented about? Oh, well, she a neat freak, so she usually pick up everything. Okay. She wouldn't leave towels laying on the middle of the bathroom floor like that? No. Move the admission of Exhibit 69, Your Honor. No objection. You received? Mark for identification is Exhibit 67. Is this another one of those photos that Lieutenant Kolb showed you? Yes. All right. It appears there's a number of notes on that as well. Can I take a look, sir? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. This as well that you noted uh, were out of the ordinary. Yes. All right. Let's move it down just a little bit. There appears there's a table here right at the foot of the bed, kind of a round table. Yes. Where would, is that where that table was normally kept? No. Where was that table normally kept? You know, on one side of the room, on, on the side of the bed. Okay. Did you, you say the left side? side? I couldn't hear him. Which oh. side? It'd be on the right side. So the side toward the windows yeah. or the side away from the windows? Towards the windows. Okay. And whose side of the bed was that? It varies. Okay. Uh, and uh, anything else about this photo that appears to be out of, ordinary, out of the ordinary? I think there's something written here about the brown bottle. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it was in the closet. Okay. Last time I saw and do you know, was that brown bottle, was it, <clears throat> had that been opened before you went into jail? No. Move the admission of Exhibit 67, Your Honor. No objection. It is received. is Exhibit 66. Is this another one of the photos that Lieutenant Colm showed you? Yes. All right. May I publish your honor? Amen. And then Eric, uh, looking at this, uh, it shows that uh, side of the bed that you were talking about. Is that where that round table normally would have been? Yes. Move the admission of Exhibit 66, your honor. No objection. <coughs> it is received. Talk 
to you a little bit about some of the uh, evidence that was observed at the uh, at the scene uh, later on. Uh, I believe you had told Lieutenant Cole that there might have been a couple of small blood stains on the mattress. Yes. May I approach? May. I'm showing you what was previously admitted as Exhibit Number Twelve. Is that that's the mattress, correct? Yes. Can I publish it, Your Honor? I want to ask this question. Eric, looking at Exhibit 12, it appears there is something that's been testified to as a rather large blood stain uh, in this, that kind of goes around in this area here. Is that the small blood stain you were talking about, or is this different? No. Was, was this blood stain present when you were last there on October 8th? No. of the mark is Exhibit 55. Does that appear to be the headboard uh, from your bed? Yes. Uh, can I publish it, Your Honor? Go ahead. Eric, right in this area, it might be a little harder to see on here, but there appears to be a blood stain right here. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, was that blood stain present on that headboard on October 8th when you were last at your apartment? No. I moved the impression of Exhibit 5. I don't think it's going to take it from me previously. 55? 55. No objection. So it'll be received. Thank you. Matt Porcher. Go ahead. Mark, I'm showing you what is previously been marked for identification as Exhibit 51. This has been admitted. Uh, is this the side of your bed and then the carpet near your bed? Yes. May I publish your honor and ask questions about it? Yes. Looking at exhibit number 51, uh, there is a, a large area that's previously been identified as a blood stain on the carpet there. Was that present on your carpet when you were last there on October 8th? No. Had you ever seen that blood stain before? October 8th of 2010. No. Thank you. May I approach? Yes. I'm showing you what is previously been marked and admitted as exhibit number 30. Does that appear to be uh, a a relatively short wall in the hall of your uh, apartment? Yes. All right. May I publish and ask some questions about it? Yes. Eric, in the, on that wall, it appears that there is an area of a blood stain that was previously identified. Was that blood stain there when you were last there on October 8, 2010? No. I'm showing you what has been previously marked as exhibit number 10. Do you recognize what that photo is? Yes. What is that photo? A photo of the mattress and the bottom of the table. Okay. And that's a table that was next to the bed? Yes. Right. Ron, I move the admission of exhibit 10 and ask to publish. I want to ask some questions about it. Any objection? None. It's received. Looking at uh, exhibit number 10, uh, it appears on that uh, table or next to the bed, there appears to be some blood in that area, or what is a red substance that appears to be blood. Do you see that? Yes. Was that present? Was that red substance on there present when you were last there on October 10th, or October 8th, I'm sorry, of 2010? No. Move the admission of Exhibit 10 if it has it. I don't think it has. It's in. Is it? Okay.
Proctor. Showing you as previously been marked and admitted as exhibit number 27. Does that appear to be the door leading into your bedroom? Yes. May I publish and ask questions related to this? Yes. Looking at that uh, photo, uh, Eric, it appears right in this area there to be a red stain that's previously been uh, identified as being suspected blood. Was that present on October 8th, 2010, when you were last in there? No. Just have a couple other things I want to talk about. Did Stephanie have any dogs as of October of 2010? Yes. How many did she have? Two. And uh, what were their names? You know, Coco and Gary. What kind of dog was Coco? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a thick bull, but I think it was a chocolate lab. All right. And how uh, was Coco still just a puppy? Yes. All right. And how about the other dog? Uh, what kind of dog was that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I used to call it a cocker spaniel. Okay. And how did Stephanie feel about her dogs? She loved her dogs. Would she leave them alone if? Uh, she was going to be gone for a significant period of time? No. What would she do? She'd take them with her. Yes. I'm to show you, uh, Eric, what has previously been identified as Exhibit 222. Uh, is that the closet in your uh, apartment, in your main bedroom? Yes. All right. And it appears there's a, there's like a cabinet above the top of the closet itself? Yes. All right. Uh, did that, if you open that up, would it stay open or did you have to hold it open, if you recall? I don't recall. Okay. All right, that's right. <coughs> now, you said you were familiar with the defendant, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, did he ever help you clean your apartment? No. Did he ever help mop floors in your apartment? No. To your knowledge, did he ever use the model? You know, no. The last thing I need you to do, and, and if you can, is do you see the defendant in court here today? Yes. Could you point him out by where he's seated and what he's wearing? Black, black sweater, glasses. Ask the record to reflect the identification of the defendant, Your Honor. I, I asked. I, the director will reflect the material head. Thank the you. Decision. Well, I'll stipulate to identification. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Eric, do you know why the defendant was named Spider? No. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. show you um, what's been previously marked as government exhibit, the state exhibit number 224. Um, you ever seen it before, a diagram of the, of the apartment? <coughs> no. Okay. Does it look about right about where things were? I'm just really talking, Mr. Mahomes, about uh, <coughs> rooms and pieces of furniture, like dining room table with three chairs. Look about right? Yes. Okay. Was there, before you went to jail, went to jail in the early morning hours of October 8, 
2010, right? Yes. Before you went to jail, was there a rug, a carpet underneath that dining room table? I don't recall, but it was a rug somewhere in the living room or the dining room. Tell me about that. What color was it? I don't recall. Was it made of? Was it thick? Was it shag? What was it? I don't recall it being so long ago. Did you maintain within the apartment some type of container full of silver dollar coins and other change? Yes. Where'd you keep it? Just keep it in my bedroom. Where? In the bedroom. I said where in the bedroom. I don't recall. Is there something troubling you? It was changed and it was two dollar bills in there. Was were, were there silver dollar coins in there as well? I don't recall. Okay. Was it a lot of change? Yes. Was it what kind of container were these coins in? It's ping bang. Remember what? Uh, was it ceramic, glass, what? been so long that it just it was a penny bank. A lot of two dollar bills or just a couple? It was a few. Could you approximate the amount of paper money that was in the piggy bank? No, I can't tell you. I wouldn't be able to tell you. When you were talking with Miss Lowe from the jail, October 8th and, and October 9th, you talked with her about those coins, telling her those are available if she needs money, right? I don't recall that conversation. slider phone of yours. Are you with me? Yes. That was with Miss Lowe when you went to jail on the 8th? Yes. And were you aware whether she took telephone calls on it? No. No, she didn't or no, you don't know? I don't know. I don't recall. Do you know if that phone was utilized to take orders or set up cocaine, crack cocaine transactions? No. It was not? I don't, I'm saying I don't know what, what she was doing with the phone. While you were in custody, you were made aware or you knew that Miss Lowe did not want to be alone, correct? Can you rephrase that? While you were in custody, you were aware Miss Lowe did not want to be alone in the apartment. Yes. Even when you were there in the apartment before October 8th, you would always lock both of the doors to the apartment 
street level and upper door, right? Yes. And you guys would engage the deadbolt of each door, right? Yes. You did this because you needed or wanted security from the drug trafficking business, you were, correct? No. Why otherwise was the security utilized? That's what you do. The only people who you knew in October 2010 to have keys to your, your and Miss Lowe's apartment would be yourself, correct? Yes. And Miss Lowe, correct? Yes. You learned on the evening of Saturday, October 9th, 2010, that Miss Lowe intended to lock herself in her bedroom, correct? No. Do you recall during your jail conference with her on the her phone call with her that she indicated that she intended to do that that night or no? Mm, I don't recall that conversation. Okay. Does the bedroom door uh, to the main bedroom where you found the saw was shown the blood evidence, does that door lock? I don't recall the lock. Would the dog kennel for the dogs <coughs> We've asked others that you live there. Would that typically be inside the apartment? Yes. The spare bedroom to the apartment uh, about which Mr. DeFord showed you those windows. You with me? Yes. That, that was a bed there and a box spring, right? Yes. Did that, before you went to jail, um, did that bed have bedding upon it? It had bedding in the room. I didn't go in that room before I left home. Do you think that bedding, Mr. Mahomes, sheets and blankets was actually on the bed? or just in the room somewhere? It was on the bed. Look, those I mean the prop, those windows in the spare bedroom. You know anything about them? Whether they there were storm windows attached to them or anything like that? I don't remember. Did your you you have children that would sometimes stay in that room, right? Yes. Oh, wasn't the door to that room? Wasn't the door to that room typically closed? No. Oh, it was open. Yes, it'd be open. Okay. And you don't know. Let's strike that. Move on. Um, <coughs> so that that bottle of. Don Julio tequila. You know what I'm talking about? The, the brown one that we put, that Mr. DeFore showed you? Yes. Before you went to jail, that thing was recently bought, wasn't cracked open yet, right? Right. Got it. Did you and Miss Lowe have 
you remember a set of knives in your apartment? Or any knives? Yeah, it did. It's, yes. Were they kept in the kitchen? Yes. Were you ever shown any knives by any law enforcement in this case? I don't remember. Now, you remember when you were first interviewed, uh, when Miss Lowe went missing, uh, you met with some law enforcement. They wanted to inform you that your girlfriend was missing, right? Yes. And they had some questions for you, correct? Yes. And they asked you on October 11, 2010, um, about the drugs they found in the heart, right? Yes. And you said, I didn't know there were any drugs there. Right? Right. Believe. You believe? Yes. You said there was a safe there, but that was just for papers and not drugs. Remember that? I don't, I don't remember. You remember in this first interview, it would have been with a guy by the name of Detective, now Captain, Matthew Barnes. You know who he is? Yes. Do you remember saying to him, my prints aren't going to come back on the plastic bags found in the safe. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember Detective Barnes asking you whether you owed anybody any money for the drugs? And you said no? I don't remember that conversation. You do? I don't recall that conversation. And if that conversation was had, these are all not true, right? Because you did know about the drugs in the apartment, right? At that time, no. At the time you were being interviewed, you didn't know. It, until I was told, informed of the drugs found in the apartment. Okay, because drugs were what you believe delivered to the apartment after you went into jail. Possibly. Well, they, you know that about a little under an ounce of crack cocaine in the apartment, right? You know that. Yes, I was charged with. Right. But you didn't know about it until they told you about it, right? Is that what you're telling the jury? You didn't the know the drugs were there until the police told you it was there. At the time I told the police, I didn't know it was there. Okay. Well, do you, did you eventually learn how it got there? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation. Okay, I, I, I got to wrap my money around this. Um, you told the police, they, they came to visit you after Stephanie Lowe had disappeared, correct? Yes. And they confronted you with the fact that crack cocaine was found in a safe in your apartment that you shared with Miss Lowe, right? Yes. And you said what to them? Do you remember? Objection, I asked and answered. I already asked it. I already asked it. Did you know that 42 grams were in your apartment when you got arrested on October 8th? Objection asked and answered. I, I, I wasn't clear whether he knew or not. I think it was an answer. Did you know when you went into, by the time you went into jail, I'll make this very, very simple. By the time you went into jail at 4 a.m. or thereabouts on October 8th, 2010, did you know 42 grams of crack cocaine were in your apartment? I don't recall that. Well, do you remember eventually telling detectives that Stephanie Lowe obtained the 42 grams? Do you remember that? No. And you don't know that to be true, right? You don't know how they got there. At the time I told police, I didn't know how to get there. I didn't hear you. At the time I told police, I didn't know. Let me interrupt you here. Gail indicates that someone needs to break. Yes, Your Honor, we are requesting that the uh, meeting
videotape, uh, live stream, uh, film, or photograph uh, any of the uh, witnesses that are in prison or jail at this point in time. There are four of them total, three in prison, Carnell Pearson, Adam Smith, and Joshua Howard, and jail would be Rebecca Torgerson. And there's no objection to uh Mike being up there recording them? No. Not as far as their voices, no. Okay, and your concern is? Our concern, Your Honor, is the safety of them. We are aware that two of the individuals uh, have already been attacked in prison uh, because of their cooperation with law enforcement in this matter. And uh, we're concerned that further emphasizing their uh, identity by showing their uh, image media uh, would, could potentially lead to further uh, attacks 